Ron Rivera's comments on his quarterback situation compared to other NFC East teams shines a bigger light on the coaching staff in Washington than it does Carson Wentz. We'll tell you why right now on the Locked On Commanders podcast. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome in, Commanders fans, to the Locked On Commanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, and we are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and the WUSA 9 Plus app on your Roku or Amazon Fire Stick. And we thank you for making us your first listener view of the day. I'm David Harrison. My co-host is Chris the Rooster Russell. Both of us are credentialed media covering your Commanders. Chris is doing it for the Team 980, where you'll find he and Pete Medhurst live from 9 a.m. to noon Eastern, Monday through Friday or anytime on the Odyssey app, and I am doing it for Commander Country, where I am a writer for Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation. Indeed you are. Thanks again for making us your first listen and your first view of the day. And today's episode of LOC is brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, David, you were there. Ron Rivera said, what? So, Ron, let's set the stage. Yeah. Ron was asked by Matt Paris of the Washington Times, hey, Ron, you know, just a seemingly innocuous question. Um, you guys are in last place, and I'm paraphrasing here. Uh, the Giants keep winning and surprising people. The, the Eagles are undefeated, and the Cowboys are a defensive machine. Uh, and, and what is the difference between you and the other three teams in the East? And right. Ron flat out just answered one word, one word initially. And he said quarterback. Yeah. And of course that ruffled everybody's feathers appropriately. So uh, again, there was more context, which we'll get into, but when you were there in person, what was your first reaction? Uh, I think my first reaction was a reaction that everybody had, which was, that's not the whole answer. Like there, <laughs> there was a noticeable pause yeah. in the room when he just said quarterbacks and then he starts staring back at Matt and everybody was like, oh, that's, that's, that's all he's saying. And then, yeah. uh, Matt, you know, uh, I mean, look, look, like that was just a surprise to everybody. Just, just the one word answer. And then Matt kind of collected himself and was like, you know, okay, but you chose the quarterback, right? Like, this is your quarterback, you know? And, and in a roundabout way, trying to say like, and, and I think everybody's kind of wondering like, is, is, is this the moment where Ron Rivera throws Carson Wentz to the wolves and says, this is a quarterback problem, Yeah, you know? And, and that's, that's kind of the, the initial reaction. And honestly, Chris, like, look, look, I got my laptop sitting in front of me, just like everybody else. So for those who have never been in the room, I sit behind Matt Paris, like, like Matt, when, when, when I ask my questions, typically it's Matt Paris handing me the microphone. You know what I mean? So like when he asked the question, like I'm sitting right, right behind him. And he said later that he knew like that there was, he didn't know if Ron was gonna be mad about the question or if he was just not going to answer it altogether, but he certainly did not expect, you know, the, the quarterback situation to, to be the answer. And um, all I heard was keyboards clacking, which I thought was uh, indicative of, of the moment. It kind of reminded me of, when Jack said what he said in, in during uh, before training camp, now, obviously not the same tone in the same topic, but I just it was just one of those moments where I was like, yeah, this is this is a uh, this is going to be a moment. I mean, listen, it's going to create uh, you know show topics and and, and yep. podcast topics for us. I know in my radio I mean, show, we it's all we're going to talk about, right? And it's all anybody's going to want to uh, talk about, even though Ron did ultimately explain it a little bit more, which we'll get into. But when you heard it and and with some time to process it we are recording this episode late monday afternoon this yeah. happened um you, you know a couple of hours before recording it you've had time to drive home think about right. it what have you did you take it absolutely and do you still take it as an indictment of carson wentz so yeah i mean look when <laughs> when he said quarterback like i mean how do you not take that as an indictment right. of carson wentz right but that's re really kind of threw me as was like there's no way like there's no way he's just saying like Carson Wentz is the issue like there's no way that's what we're like that would be just a total 180 character flip uh, mm -hmm. of Ron Rivera I'm not a huge wrestling guy Chris so you can tell me but like 
You talk about a guy going from heel or from from face to heel in mm -hmm. a moment like that would be like whatever the most surprising heel flip is that what they call it right heel flip yeah uh, in wrestling heel yeah. turn yeah whatever the most like historic heel turn is in in wrestling history that would be for, for me that would be on par so you know when Matt essentially asked his follow up which was more kind of a stumbled like but you picked him um and and he did he said you know if you look at and this is this is a quote you know you took it from the transcript put it straight into uh, our script here he, and Ron said quote if you look at teams that su sustained success they're able to build it around a specific quarterback now we have mm -hmm. a guy we think we have a chance to build around the way he performed yesterday showed what he's capable of we chose him because we believe in him end quote so like you know he he followed it up which you know i don't know if ron realized in the beginning like like everybody's taking this as you saying carson is your problem right um but he he backed it up by saying that basically you look at the giants you look at the cowboys you look at the eagles and they've built their offenses around their quarterbacks and that's basically what he is wanting to do is have an opportunity to build uh, this offense around this quarterback, which I have many more expanding thought. Like this conversation is not just going to be a one segment conversation, guys. Like, so stick with it because we're going to continue this thing mm -hmm. into the next segment because this thing branches into several different directions. So, yeah, initially that's kind of the thought. But at the same time, like I said, it's it's kind of a you can't possibly be doing this right now. Like that's not it's not what is happening. So then when Ron clarified what he actually meant, Okay, so he's not throwing Carson Wentz under the bus, right? Right, that's not what he's saying. But he's he's not saying that it's all Carson's fault and Carson is our problem and all that stuff. He's saying something else. What he is saying, I still don't think he's meaning to say publicly, or maybe he is. I don't know. Maybe this is uh, another shot, you know, out in the public to wake another person up. But that person is not Carson Wentz. That person to me is Scott Turner. All right, so that's interesting because I hadn't thought about that specific angle, but. I'm on board with it, absolutely, yeah. because Ron has been saying over and over and over and over and over again that we need to run the football more, much like we did during the four-game winning streak. And clearly, and as you asked Ron Rivera, yeah. hey, you didn't run it as much as you did you know, uh, against Dallas. And, and again, there may be some reasons for that, lack of success and, and also a different defense that you're going against. But the bottom line is, is you got the head coach screaming to the high heavens every chance he gets. You got to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, just like we did during the four-game winning streak. And it seems like the offensive coordinator doesn't really want to run the ball. Now, when I – just real quickly, when I first heard the explanation – yeah. I know I, I know what Ron is trying to say. I know what Ron is trying to say. He's trying to preach continuity, that mm -hmm. he hasn't had an opportunity to have continuity and stability at the most important position. Yep. But the problem is it gets further exposed by the fact that Jalen Hurts just been starting for a year and a half. Yep. And, well, Cooper Rush is 4-0 as a starter filling in for Dak Prescott. And Daniel Jones is the exact and opposite of, of stability, if you will, for the Giants. Sure, he's been there, but he's always hurt. And he's always turning the ball over until Brian Dayball took over this year. So I guess the re I understand what Ron was trying to get at. The problem is he didn't really think through his ultimate point. Well, and, and listen, that's the problem with grass me straws. Like, let, let's just be honest. Like, that, that's... That answer was Ron trying to explain away a question. That's that's really what it boiled that's down true. to, and and that's it's ups, it's 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 upsetting just because you know I, I just I just hate to see Ron do it to be quite honest with you. But that's that's the way that I took it. Um, but I do think it, it it exposes some things, right? And 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 you kind of just touched on it, but we're we got to dive deeper into. So there's multiple branches of things. So guys, we're gonna try to climb one branch at a time so that we're not confusing everybody because like again, there are several different avenues. Uh, to this conversation. And again, for me, I think what Ron said shines a brighter light on Scott Turner uh, than it does anybody else. But before we get to all that, we got to talk about uh, some other friends of ours, and those are the good people over at Tommy John Underwear. Fall, depending on where you live, especially, can be chaos in your pants. You're overheating one second, and then you're freezing the next, or maybe it's super humid in the morning and then super freezing at night. And to be ready for anything, you're going you're gonna to need underwear that can handle everything. It's time for Tommy John underwear in Tommy John un underwear. You're that much more comfortable so you can do everything just a little bit better. If you name a problem with other underwear, Tommy John has solved it. Tommy John's breathable lightweight fabric has four times the stretch of competing brands 
they come with a no wedgie guarantee. So if you're plagued by the wedgie monster, try them out. They guarantee that you will not get a wedgie in their underwear. I know it's uncomfortable for people to talk about, but it's a reality, guys. Thanks to a non-rolling waistband and legs, they never ride up. Plus, they feature a horizontal quick draw fly with over 17 million pairs sold. People love Tommy John underwear. That's why Tommy John doesn't have customers. They have fanatics or fans. Washington Commanders, you're familiar with the term. Plus, everything's backed with Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free guarantee. Go to TommyJohn.com slash locked on right now for 20% off your first order. That's 20% off at TommyJohn.com slash locked on. TommyJohn.com slash locked on. See the site for details. All right, thanks once again for making the Lockdown Commanders podcast your first listen and your first view of the day. We are part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure you check out NFL Key Predictions every Friday on Locked On NFL. Locked On's at local experts give you the inside scoop on the five biggest games of the NFL weekend, including Sunday and Monday night football. Plus, you're going to get betting advice from the field's leading experts at Bet Online. Follow NFL Key Predictions every Friday on Locked On NFL. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. Before we finish up, uh, at least for now, uh, a couple of more key points uh, on the Ron Rivera Carson Wentz press conference deal, if you will, from Monday. Why don't we get one of our couple of voicemails in here from our pal Mark, who wants to weigh in uh, on Locked On Commanders? Hey, what's up, David? What's up, Chris? Uh, it's your boy Mark checking in from the DMV. Um, this team is just terrible. Uh, I don't even know how to put it. When you don't convert on third downs and you're on the two yard line and you throw an interception, I don't know what to say. I mean, I don't know if it's Taylor Heineke time. I don't know if maybe this is Ron Rivera's last year. Uh, it's just this, this team isn't clicking on any cylinders right now. Um, it was a rough game to watch. I hope maybe we can do something. I'm already looking at the draft. Maybe we need to draft a quarterback. Uh, Ohio State quarterback should go number one. Maybe we get that pick. But this is terrible, and it's hard to watch. Um, shout out to all the Washington football team fans, our commanders fans. Um, hopefully we can do better. Thank you. All right, Mark. We appreciate you weighing in as always. Uh, David, Um I mean, you can hear the frustration in his voice, not the only voice we're going to hear from. Um, there's frustration in everyone's voice and everyone's body, if you will. The body language right now is terrible. There was yeah. major frustration from Jonathan Allen Sunday in the locker room. Um, however, I, 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 again, I would continue to say, like, even though our our main point of emphasis today is what Ron Rivera said and what he meant about Carson Wentz, um, a I would I would say coming off of the performance on Sunday, even though it ended badly, it's it, it's kind of a weird time right now. If you would uh, be considering a quarterback switch, certainly not before the game, but even early or at some point in the Chicago game on Thursday night, unless things are absolutely awful, it's you know. Like it's not just changing a goaltender in hockey to get a spark, you know. Right. Um, it's not the same thing. It means something completely different, regardless of what Ron meant on Sunday or on Monday, I should say. You know, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm saying that right, but yeah. it, it's not just like, oh, like flip the light switch and everything's gonna be okay. Yeah, and 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 honestly, I'm glad you said it because it kind of goes to my point here of what Ron said and what it actually means, right? Mm -hmm. So listen, a lot of people have, have already pointed out the problem with what Ron said with the NFC East teams having success because they've had the opportunity to build around their quarterbacks. Um, because outside of Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles, that makes zero sense. Now, right. and Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles, like you said, it's been what it's been a year and a half with this coaching staff and this quarterback. Now, look, mm -hmm. you can do and learn a lot of things about each other in 12 to 18 months, right? And and we all know they went out and they did they purposely went out and said, we're going to give Jalen Hurts as many weapons as we can because if you can't make this work with these weapons, you just can't make it work. Like that's that's pretty much the bottom line, right? Um, and Jalen has risen up to the challenge. That's fantastic. Uh, shout out to Teresh Manuel. Am I saying the last name correctly, Chris? So you know him better than I do. Uh, uh, yeah, Teresh. Yeah, Teresh. So, so just Teresh from our uh, from our corporate, uh, you know, yeah. 
corporate uh, partners. Uh, or, yeah, tag, uh, our, our, he works for Tegna, who owns uh, the network that we work yep. for. So yep. um, at Resh Manuel, M-A-N-U-E-L. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly um, right. on Twitter. He's a great follow because he always has some really poignant mm -hmm. observations, right? So, of course... When Ron Rivera says this, you, we know that Rush is he's Teresh is gonna is gonna respond right. to it. And here's what he tweeted: Cooper Rush completed ten passes yesterday. Cooper Rush completed ten passes yesterday, Chris, when the Cowboys whooped up on the Los Angeles Rams. Daniel Jones hasn't thrown a TD pass in three straight games, mm. and they just beat the Green Bay Packers. Quarterback is not the reason the Giants and Cowboys are winning. Right. So. Why are the Giants and Cowboys winning if it's not their quarterbacks? Because we know the Dallas Cowboys love their quarterback. They paid Dak Prescott 20% of their salary cap because of how much they love him. So what's the answer, Chris? The answer is coaching. And not only is the answer coaching, the answer is offensive coordinators and head coaches who understand the strengths of their roster and put their team in position to be successful. What I see in Washington, and listen, what the unfair grain of salt that I need to throw on this about what I'm about to say is, I'm not in the meeting rooms. I'm not in the game plan sessions. I'm not in the headset, okay? But what I, from what I witness, without being told any other information or getting access to any other information, what I'm witnessing, what I believe I see, so if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm more than willing to be proven wrong, but I'm going to have to be shown behind the curtain a little bit to, to have that, right? Is I see an offense being run by Scott Turner that says, this is my offense. Here's my offense. Here's my box. Carson. Here's what you do well that works inside my box. Go mm -hmm. do that. Instead of shaping the vehicle to what your driver, your quarterback, does best. That's what I see. That's the opposite of what you're seeing with the Dallas Cowboys, New York Giants, and the Philadelphia Eagles, who agree have had more time. But let's just say, for argument's sake, right? So on one side of the argument, Daniel Jones hasn't thrown a touchdown pass in three games. Cooper Rush threw the ball 10 times to beat the defending Super Bowl champions. Your point is invalid. But let's just say the point is valid. You know what? Let's just let's ignore that and say, you know what? Maybe the point is valid. Brian Dable has had Daniel Jones for just as long as Scott Turner has had Carson Wentz. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike McCarthy and whoever his offense coordinator, I know he does a lot of play calling stuff. He's had Cooper Rush longer than they've had Carson Wentz. Right. Cooper Rush is not Dak Prescott. No. Like they, they, they could be more different. Okay. I don't want to say they couldn't be more different, right. but they're vastly different quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. The Dallas Cowboys scheme and playbook is not designed around Cooper rush. Mm -hmm. So even if Cooper rush is a reason they're winning, it's not because the scheme was already designed around him. It's because the scheme is being folded around what Cooper rush does. Well, avoiding what he doesn't do well and flexing it to make sure the other player makers on the team, have the ability to influence what the quarterback is doing. That is what's happening in New York. That is what's happening in Dallas. That is what's happening in Philadelphia. It's not happening in Washington right now. Coaching matters. That answer shines a humongous bright spotlight on the fact that that coaching is not happening in Washington. Yeah, I think Ron got himself, uh, of course, in trouble and realized how how it came out and how it would be interpreted, and that everybody would just raise the, you know, the, the uh, you know, the alarm and and all that stuff. So he tried to talk himself around it, basically, yeah. and as usual, did a poor job. Uh, I also think he was. David, I think he was letting his frustration show and was also oh, yeah. being candid from private to public about Wentz. Um, and, and again, just didn't realize how bad it would sound, look, or whatever, especially no. when comparing it, uh, again, to Cooper Rush and Daniel Jones. So no. I, I think he was trying to be a little bit, quite honestly, revealing, hey, if the quarterback was exactly what we were hoping for him to be, what he thought, what we thought he would be, what we traded for, we wouldn't be in this mess. But can I and tell you, that's not leadership, though. I, that's not I, leadership. I, under, I understand that. Like, Chris, understand Chris that. Russell, listen, if you were the exact co-host – like if I could just build the perfect co-host for David Harrison, uh -huh. then I would never have any hiccups on this show, Chris Russell. Uh, I, you know listen, that. I, you listen, know that? You, you, you know, I, I already life. know. Listen, I already know that you uh, tolerate me as 
<laughs> as opposed, I mean, you yesterday for to to peel back the curtain a little bit. Okay, not that many people care. You get so frustrated with me about how much space I take up at the desk in the press box, how I don't properly wrap up my microphone cord, which I yeah. had to unfurl today because I got frustrated in a playful sort of way, and I said, "See, I'm going to show you. I'm going to wrap it all around," and I wrapped it around 185 times, and it took me 10 minutes to unfurl it. Anyway, I know I'm not perfect. I know I'm the furthest thing from perfect and nobody expects perfection at the quarterback position, but I right. truly do believe, you know, like while, while you and most people, I under, and I understand Scott Turner deserves some of the blame, I think are putting more of the blame on Scott Turner. I put a lot of the blame still on Carson Wentz. How much, I, you know, that's a different topic, but I still yeah. put a lot of the blame for the offensive struggles on Carson Wentz. And I think Ron maybe revealed a little bit, maybe a lot of it, and maybe a lot of it too much of his own personal frustration with a guy that, again, he went and swung big for. And so far, the early returns are <sighs> overall. I mean, look, here, here's what I'll say, right? I've only covered two NFL teams. One is the Buccaneers. Obviously, one is this one. I've watched a lot of football, I've observed a lot of football staffs and coaches. The ones who are most successful are the ones who are able to bend to what their players need them to do. Ron used a, a, an analogy at the end of today's press conference, and he said, it's like if you got a job, because he's talking to the media pit, right? So he's like, it's like if you got a job in a new newsroom, you got to come in that newsroom, and you have to be able to execute your duties within that newsroom. And I see where he was going with that. What I will tell you, as an organizational leader, and I have 19 and a half years of experience in this field. If you are not designing your newsroom, to use Ron's analogy, to emphasize the strengths of your reporters, you are just as wrong, if not more so, than your reporters who are failing to put out good news. Because if I have my po political writer doing finance mm -hmm. and my finance writer doing sports and my sports writer doing economic news, right? You get the gist. I'm the one in control of those assignments. Therefore, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm always going to put more ownership on the leadership than I am the, the people out there executing, you are what's wrong with the, pro with the process. And we saw it with Taylor. We're seeing it now. And I'm not saying that Taylor is, is, you know, is anything more than we really think he is anyway. But my biggest confusion, and, and Chris, we've talked about this offline, is that the Scott Turner offense seems to have an infatuation with having quarterbacks that are able to be mobile, not mobile quarterbacks, not Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, but guys who can move and refuse to move them. Yeah. In fact, what I see is quarterbacks who are being told to stay in the pocket mm -hmm. and fight the instinct they have to be mobile. And again, if you're telling your quarterback to fight their instincts, you're telling them to disarm themselves from one of the best things that makes them an NFL quarterback in the first place. We have got more to say about this topic. Chris probably has something to say about what I just said, and we're definitely going to get to that. But Chris, we've got a friend first that needs to get some words in. Absolutely. And that is our partners at Bet Online. BetOnline.net, David, as you know, is your number one source for football betting info this season. So the initial line came out late Sunday night. The commanders are one point underdogs on the initial spread and holding true as of um as of late monday afternoon let's call it heading to soldier field on thursday night the over under has already dropped two points from the initial 40 down to 38 clearly the football betting public does not like this game and why would you <laughs> find out all the latest player developments team matchups news podcasts and in-depth articles and analysis on every game uh, right at Bet Online. As always, uh, get your in game live betting done with Bet Online because they have everything up to the minute. And of course, all the props and all the different bets that you can make are always changing based on what's actually going on in real time. If you're looking for some college action coming up later on this week, Thursday night, how about Baylor minus the three and a half uh, over West Virginia? You could pick. Uh, you know, maybe one side there and pick a side in the Commanders Bears game and combine it into a little parlay action and have yourself a pretty good Thursday night if you smell what I'm cooking. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including the baseball postseason, college football, and more with the NHL and uh, NBA about to start, head to Bet Online and use your mobile device to learn more at Bet Online, where the game 
starts. All right, guys, back now for the final segment of the Locks on Commanders podcast. Uh, we've been talking about this Ron Rivera quarterback conversation and comments uh, that he made on purpose or inadvertently maybe kind of shining a light behind the, clear, the curtain a little bit on what's going on inside the organization. Honestly, this conversation could take two or three whole episodes uh, and we would still probably leave some stuff on the table. But we have uh, got to get to some other voicemails that you guys have left us. We definitely want to make sure you get your airtime as well. But Chris, before we hit the voicemail line, real quick, just what I had to say there at the end of the segment two, do you have anything to add to that before we hit the voicemail line? Yeah. I, I mean, just, I, you mean about Scott Turner? I yeah. like, look, I, I understand where you're coming from. Scott Turner has not done a good enough job, period. He need, period. And I worry more about the divide between him and, and Ron Rivera in terms of philosophy than per se, how he has or has not put Carson Wentz in a better position to succeed. Because I think, that component is based on largely on Carson Wentz and certainly some on Scott Turner. I worry about, and we've talked about this over the offseason, maybe the philosophical divide between yeah. Turner and Rivera, where again, and I mentioned this earlier in the show, Rivera wants to run, 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 run more, control the clock, limit possessions, that type of thing, like they did during the four-game winning streak. And Turner clearly feels, hey, I ain't going to run the ball into a brick wall if it ain't working and if it's not there. And so somehow, some way, David, they've got to figure that out. Yeah. Absolutely. So last thing I will say about this before we move into voicemails, like I said, there are so many branches on this thing. We could climb this thing for three episodes, but we got Thursday night football. So we really don't have time right. to really dissect the whole thing is um, one of the last comments Ron made about this topic was uh, just about having the opportunity to build around a guy and they feel like they finally have a guy they can actually build around, which speaks to trying to give Scott Turner more time to figure out how to put an offense around Carson and how to run an offense with Carson at the helm. But also, you might see, I mean, I, I, nobody's going to commit to this after week five, but there's a possibility you see this team run through with Carson through the entire season. I think it's very highly likely you see them run with Carson through the entire season, which means that next year you're giving up a second round draft pick and then you're coming into the off season deciding, are we going to roll with Carson again for 2023? You're not going to draft a guy, right? Because you just got Sam Howell in the fifth round that you had a higher grade on, I think a second round grade on. Or do you go after another veteran and now you have to either trade more capital or spend similar type of salary cap, but who are you going to spend similar type, similar type salary cap money on that now you are coming with a brand new, like it, it's just a very, very jammed situation. But I, the very last comment about having the opportunity to build around a guy, I think he's looking at Philadelphia specifically. And that tells me that the plan right now is to stick with Carson uh, through the long haul. So again, not an indictment on Carson, but to me showed much more about what's going on with the coaching staff. All right. Why don't we get to a, uh, I think we have time for at least one voicemail here. Why don't we go to our pal Hogskins and get his thoughts after another frustrating loss. And Russ D money. Oh man, this is Hogskins, man. I'm just calling the vent after this game. I just had to call the, uh, the line, man. Oh my God. That game. We should have won that game. I can't believe that. The number one, I feel the, well, the play before the interception that ended the game. I think Carson Wentz could have, he could have ran that one in. When they showed the replay, he had plenty of them. I think Heineke would have took that in for the, uh, for the score, man. Oh, I was so disappointed. Uh, let me see also, oh, Nick Martin, the center, man, that, man, that dude had a horrible game and all those, Low snaps uh, out of the, um, you know, the shotgun, man. And then the, um, what was that? A hands to the face, man. I mean, that dude, <laughs> they need to get another center. That dude looked horrible. But, uh, and then, the, you know, on the challenge, when Rivera challenged that pass, I mean, when I, I looked at it, I, I really couldn't tell if he caught it or not. It was hard for me. I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I kind of thought it was a catch, but, you know, of course, you know, it wasn't. So, I, mean, I just can't believe we didn't win that, man, right there on the two-yard line. We had, what, four plays, and they could not get the ball in there. So, I mean, I'm very disappointed. But anyway, uh, I'm definitely glad to see Brian Robinson back. Definitely, you know, happy to see that guy. So, hopefully, um, he'll get better, you know with more practice and, you know, more play, you know, play, play time, you know, in, in actual games. I think that dude's going to be a beast. So 
Anyway, fellas, you know, like I said, man, I just, I just wanted to vent real quick. So see what happened next game. All right, and I'll talk to you guys after the next game. All right, Hogskins, we appreciate you as well. But uh, just because of time, I'll, I'll choose one part of that. David, I talked to former head coach Jay Gruden um, Monday morning, and he said – basically it was inexcusable to challenge that third and one catch by Cam Sims. You can't do that in that spot. Somebody's got to, in the booth, realize that, you know, even if you think it's a catch, it's not enough to overturn the non-catch. And basically it cost them a timeout, which ultimately cost them, in the end, the ability to do maybe what Hogskins was talking about, which was, you know, Wentz running it in out of a spread formation or – you know, some other option as we discussed in detail after last, uh, uh, after Sunday night's game, Sunday afternoon's game. Yeah. I, I will say this in the moment, I didn't have an issue with Ron challenging it. So in the, in the spirit of fairness, I'm not going to now use hindsight to have a problem with it in the moment. I did not have a problem with it. the only reason that, and and I did think this afterwards, the only reason I, I had an issue with it is if you know, you're in four down territory, and now you're facing third and short, just run the fourth down play. Right. Like you already know you're like, it doesn't change regardless win or lose that challenge. You're running another play. This is not the difference between punting and getting a first down. This is the difference between do we need 10 yards or do we need two yards to gain? Regardless, you're running another play. Go run the play. Get the first down uh, two yards. Not that hard to gain. Right, Chris? Uh, well, except for when you're the commanders. Sorry to leave it on that. All right. Uh, I We have to get on out of here um, because, well, we're out of time. <laughs> we will try and get all your voicemails in uh, w- as soon as we can, guys. It's going to be a weird week, uh, of course, with the Thursday night game. So just be, be patient with us. Be patient with us. We love you. Uh, keep them coming uh, at 301 uh, 615 3577 301-615-3577. Thanks again for making the Lockdown Commanders podcast your first listen and view of the day. Now make your second listen and view the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock, former NFL scout Matt Williamson, giving you the expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. We'll be back with a solo episode, me, uh, and uh, I'll be doing after further review and breaking down the William Jackson the third mess, just a little bit more. Uh, for David Harrison, my partner covering the Washington Commanders, Freshside.com's fan nation and commander country, I'm Chris Russell. One half of the Russell and Medhurst show on the Team 980 in the Odyssey app. If you're out and about, please be safe, be kind to one another, and thank you for joining us right here on the Lockdown Commanders podcast.